Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. It's time for another Raid Shadow Legends video, and this one's going to be the Beast Man Kale uh, getting his overview. So I did a Kale guide. It's probably like the first guide I ever did, I think, or maybe like first five or something. Um, since then, things have moved on. My knowledge has moved on, and what I want to show you is how to transfer a Kale build from. A clan boss style build which is what i've got now on my free to play into an arena build now this is my free to play account uh so we're at like 140 odd days in and still at this point kale is essential in my lineups uh, so kale has been um like mvp for my accounts almost everywhere in the game until recently when i pulled man eater and pain keeper together which means that kale gets out of my clan boss team i also pulled a draco so everything's gone crazy my account's gone crazy and kale's moved from being like a clan boss requirement to totally not required for clan boss anymore um so what i want to start with is just show you what my clan boss build looked like and this is what a kale clan boss build should look like so We've got defense gloves, defense percentage gloves. We've got a defense percentage chest. We've got speed boots. Uh, and then we're looking for accuracy everywhere else, really. We've got one accuracy set because I need to get my accuracy up. And I don't have a banner. Or do I have a banner? I gave my banner to someone else. So I don't have a banner. So everything about his build is right for clan boss, except I need his accuracy to be higher to be able to deal with nightmare clan boss. And the way to do that is to get a banner. Actually, Vizier stole his banner. So we've got defense here, we've got defense here, and we've got defense here. And that rounds us out at a nice 3.1k defense, the right speed for Nightmare Clan Boss. Um, and the, the thing that's lacking is a bit of accuracy. In terms of masteries, so we've got the kind of standard War Master build for Clan Boss. And then we've got a kind of accuracy tree giving us more stats here for our accuracy gear. And then the chance to land poisons and chance to extend poisons. So everything about his gear right now and set up is kind of clan boss focused, which does transition fairly well into dungeons as well. But what I want to do is change him from this kind of average hitter. So he's in my arena team. Like this, so we go speed into drop defense into one nuke into second nuke. I want to change him from being an average hitter into an absolute beast in the arena. Um, and with that, he should also be able to be a beast mode in my dungeons as well. So you'll see what he does now. We drop defense of the enemy. Uh, we get our Elhain come in with the first set of nukes. She does a good job. And then Kale comes in and ideally finishes the job. That's what he's there for. But you see that. A bunch of weak source hits and the enemy is still standing and at this point we've lost the initiative we didn't kill anyone which means we're probably going to be dead and we are dead yeah so i do win a lot of my fights i do win a lot of my fights and i've been sitting in gold three gold four for a while because of the way the arena is structured now but i want to win way more i want to get my percentage up to you know, high 90 so that this great hall just develops faster and faster and faster. So we're going to do the rebuild and I'll talk you through what I'm doing uh, as, as I'm doing it. So I'm going to clear his gear off completely and we're going to have a restart. So before we go into his build um, and the things we're going to change, I just want to talk through his kit. So poison on his A1. This is, you know, KO is so good and easily the best starter champion for a number of reasons. One, he brings poison. Poison's great for clan boss. Poison's great for dragon. Um, he brings poison on his A1, and then he brings a four hitter on his A3 as well with poison. So great for dragon, great for clan boss. Four hitter as well means that he's actually pretty viable for fire knight, certainly early into mid game. And then he brings the slam dunk on his A2, which um, also fills turn meter for everyone that he kills, which is really cool. So it's it's an AOE hit. It's got an extra 15% chance to crit. So you can actually bring his crit rate down to 85% and slam um, and still get this off as 100% crit. 
and he gets turn meter back for people that he kills. So in Spider, if you're nuking someone, he gets a ton of turn meter back. Uh, for a campaign farmer, you kill four people with this ability, gets a full turn meter bar. You know, so he constantly gets his turn meter back very quickly, um, which means he gets back to this three turn ability really fast. So he's basically good anywhere in the game, right up to end game, right up to end game when you probably would have better champions coming in to do the same type of job. But even end game, he can nuke the arena. He's got the ability to. So we're going to try and show that today. Okay, so one of the other things which I didn't mention actually, Kale's got really fast base speed. So you want to make sure that your Kale is coming in behind your drop defense champions. If he comes in too quick and lays his nuke before the drop defense goes out there, then actually you're, you're wasting a lot of your damage. So because he's got such a high base speed, you, you don't actually necessarily need to build his speed uh, you don't need to put him in like really fast gear to still get him to go pretty quick. Um, so I've reset his masteries, I've cleared his gear off, and we're kind of ready to go. I need to make sure he comes in behind my War Maiden. So War Maiden running at 220 speed. I need to make sure he's slower than War Maiden, um, but not too much slower. So what we're going to do, we're going to make sure he's slower than that. And then in terms of masteries, we are going to go for a damage build. So crit rate into crit damage. Um, he's not going to be the first person to hit, so you don't need to worry about this one. I'd rather go full HP, hit 5% more. Uh, I often go into this, gain speed as you kill people. First hit, do 8% more damage. And then into kind of chance to get his cooldown back on his main nuke quicker. Uh, into kill streak, kill people, get more damage. And then into Helm Smasher to get more damage again. So this is like an arena nuke build, also works quite well in dungeons, but this build will not work for us now in clan boss. Um, what else do we tend to run then? So we could run blood shield to give ourselves a shield value when we kill someone, which is quite nice. Um, we definitely still want to take some accuracy in his secondary tree so that he can land poisons when we get to places like dragon uh, and he can still be useful there. I'm going to take Laura's still for the stats. I'm going to take evil eye for the chance to drop turn meter on an A1, which is useful as well for arena and for um, a lot of the boss fights if you're still using them in dungeons. And I think we will, should we take here? I'm gonna take the Master Hexer to extend his poisons if he lands some. And I think we're gonna take, I think I'm gonna take Blood Shield for a chance just to get through waves in dungeons and stuff like that. So when he kills someone, he gets a mini shield. So what have I done so far? We have got HP on the, on the ring, again, so that he doesn't take all of the damage when we're running through waves. So he needs to get his HP up a bit, otherwise he's gonna take a lot of the aggro and you don't want him taking aggro. Um, but I've, got, I've made sure that that ring has got attack percentage on it. So 10%, I've got a glyph on it as well. We've got crit damage on the amulet, which is really important. Uh, with some accuracy if you can get it and we've got an hp banner only because i didn't have a good attack banner or a different accuracy banner so we've got a attack roll though triple attack percent roll so it's actually giving him a ton of attack plus i've lift it plus i've got some speed so this banner is actually not bad for doing two jobs pushing his damage up and keeping him alive so the absolute best sets I could put him in for this type of role would be uh, offense if you're very early game, um, but I tend to sell a lot of my offense gear. Speed, obviously, is just going to get you to the speed levels you need. Crit damage will improve your crit damage, as it says on the tin. Um, but the highest damage set you can use is Savage. So Savage comes from Finite. If you can get yourself in Savage gear for like an arena nuka build, it's as strong as you're going to get. Um, but you do need to have the right stats. So you're looking for speed. You're looking for crit rates. Ideally, you're looking for crit damage gloves with crit rate on them, uh, if you can get them. Or if you can't, you're looking for crit rate gloves with crit damage on them. Uh, you want some speed boots, ideally with crit rate on it. So it feels like I am... I've got four pieces for sure here that are going to do the job for me. So I'm going to build him in Savage and see, if I, see how quick I can get him to go and what sort of stats I can get out of his build. And yeah, I'll show you what I get to. 
So something well worth just pointing out here. Um, I've got some good rolls on my pieces so far. So I've got crit rate rolling up on my weapon. I've got crit rate rolling up with speed on my shield. So both of those are really great. I've got two sets of boots here. One is a four star, one is a five star. So obviously you'd be like, I want the five star. It makes me quicker. However, they both had a sub roll of crit rate. Now, I'm lucky that my faster set of boots actually just straight away double rolled crit. Perfect. We're going to equip those. But if they didn't, if they single rolled crit, I would still roll this second set of boots for the sake of five speed. I would rather have more crit rate on my boots. So if the first set didn't roll crit rate at all when I rolled it to level eight, I would have leveled this set, second set of boots and, and seen and, and basically looked to see if it did this. So you can see here. These set of boots, even though they're slower, they actually, they got better rolls. So I've actually got 14% crit rate on the second set of boots, whereas I only got 12% on the first set of boots. So don't always just go with the highest star item. Look to see what other substats roll around it. I'm actually going to take this second set of boots up to level 12 anyway, even though I know the first set of boots are already perfectly fine. Because if these roll crit rate, uh, sorry, crit damage, as the next sub roll, I might forfeit my five extra speed for some extra damage. So this is the type of thing you're doing when you're working your gear. Uh, it didn't, it rolled a crap, um, crappy sub roll. So we're gonna stick with the ones we've already rolled up, unless I'm desperate for that extra 2% crit rate when it comes to it. I've got the same type of thing going on here with gloves. Crit damage gloves with crit rate on, crit damage gloves with crit rate on, so again, I'm going to roll them both up to level eight to see which of them gives me more crit. Because if I can get as much crit as possible in my substats, it enables things like these gloves. So we've got a bad first roll. We're hoping for a better second one. If I don't get a good second one, I just move straight onto those other pair of gloves. And that's the way I gear and kind of work through my gear. So we've got one here. I'm still going to roll the second set of gloves and see if this one rolls two. If they end up being pretty similar, I'll still roll them both to 12 to see if I can get speed as a substat somewhere else. So it's, it's still kind of like min-maxing with your gear to get the best possible result. All right then, so we've got four pieces of Savage Deer on. We've got our masteries done. Four pieces of Savage Deer means that we ignore 25% of their defense, which is huge when you're talking about doing damage. Um, so what you need to do now is you just need to assess what do I need? What more do I need to make this build awesome? Um, accuracy in this build is out the window, unfortunately. Um, so poison is just not going to be landing in this style of build, which is not ideal when you're thinking about trying to take on like a dragon or a finite as well as the arena. But for the arena, this build is fantastic. So if we were just doing an arena build here, I would need a bit more speed. Another 15% crit rate um, and ideally a bit more attack. If you're trying to make him useful ev everywhere else, I would need more health. At least, like minimum health is 30k to do anything in this game, really. So I'd need more health. Um, I'd still need that extra 15% crits. And basically, I'd need a ton of accuracy, which I'm not going to get. So we're going to go for now straight arena damage. So I'm going to go attack percent on the chest. I'm going to look for that crit rate stat and ideally speed together. And it looks like there's very few pieces on my, on my account in general that have got this. Uh, War Maiden's using one right now. And you know what? We're going to take it. We're going to take it straight off her and give me, give my damage dealer that attack. War Maiden doesn't need that attack. Um, my damage dealer does. So I'm going to take the attack from her. And then on the helm, which is the missing piece, I may as well just complete the set with speed because we just used speed item. Look for just crit rate. Crit rate is the only stat I care about now to finish this build because it's the most important stat. I need 10% crit, otherwise this build is not finished. Uh, we've got a 15% to here, so I've already got definitely got something on my account that can do it. Um, I'm just looking at the other, other stats that are coming with and actually the one I'd like the most is this extra attack percentage. So I'm gonna roll this piece up to level eight and see if I get one roll of crit. If I do, this will be the final piece to the puzzle. Uh, and there it is. So I'm gonna roll this one up fully and then I'll show you the final build. 
Okay, so that is final build done. I've glyphed everything that can be glyphed. We've got 30.6k HP, which is not bad, actually. You might still be good for dungeons. We'll test it out. Uh, 3k attack, 197 speed, 90% crit rate, 179 crit damage. That's in Savage Gear. So I could probably pull his crit damage up if I was not trying to use Savage Gear. But the Savage Gear will make a big difference to his, his damage output. So we're going to test him in some arena fights, see how he does. And then we're going to try the same build in dungeons as well. It's actually a shame we um, we downranked and can't just test that same fight that I tested initially again. But this isn't a, a bot page. We're fighting people of the same sort of rank to me. So again, we go increase speed. We drop defense of our enemy. And then Kale now comes in with his Savage set and his Helm Smasher. Ignores a ton of defense and slams for 40 odd K across the board. 40 K hits when you're at this sort of level of arena. It's basically death. It's basically going to kill anyone. Uh, and you notice that everyone, uh, every time it's going to be a crit. So you know you're going to get the benefit of that crit. We've got someone here without decreased defense on. Don't forget, I'm ignoring 25% defense anyway. And if Helm Smasher goes off, we ignore even more. So there's a good chance you're still going to get a kill. And then you've got your mop up now coming in with a much easier job. So back into gold four. And this is more like an arena style kale. This is arena coming in with the damage, slamming down. And the good thing about kale is he works just the same on full auto. So we know that we're going to be able to farm the waves like crazy. I'm actually going to turn my El Hain into the same build as what I've just done here with Kale, probably without Savage, so I don't have enough Savage gear, but basically the same style of build because, again, she's no longer needed from a clan boss runs. So it completely uh, changes the way you can build a champion. Um, but you can see here, we just absolutely annihilate teams now because Kale is doing such a lot of work in those early hits. Such a lot of work. Obviously, this fella's got no chance. Um, Oh, it's actually 40k hit. There you go. Um, let's see if there's... I think these are all fairly easy fights now. So there we have it, guys. Kale transformed from the clan boss specialist into the end game arena nuka. Um, such a versatile champion. Loads of options with this champion. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the guide. And I'll catch you in another one soon.